Hey DIYers, welcome back to Scotty's Hobbies. Today we've got a hands-on project, a front brake job on a 2014 Honda Civic. I'm gonna walk you through the entire process, give you the lowdown on the tools you'll need and provide you with links to get the job done right. So let's dive in and get started. Well, before we get started, make sure you have the following tools handy. A lug wrench to take the wheels off, obviously. A jack and jack stands to hold the vehicle up while you're doing the job. A 10 millimeter socket a 17 millimeter socket. Those are going to be re to remove the caliper and the caliper bracket, a breaker bar, if necessary to get the uh, bolts off of the caliper bracket as well. Usually the caliper bracket uh, to knuckle assembly bolt might be a little hard to get off. So you might need a breaker bar to loosen those ones. And of course a torque wrench. When we get done, I believe I use a three eighths and a half inch torque wrench. But we use a torque wrench to properly tighten everything down. I'll give you the torque specifications as we go along in the video. So make sure you stay tuned. Make sure to like, subscribe, and share too while you're watching. Look for links in the description below and let me know if this video does help you on your vehicle. Let me know the year make model. Actually let everybody else know so that they know that this will actually work for them. First things first, let's remove the wheel. Use a lug wrench to loosen the lug nuts before you take the vehicle off the ground or jack the wheel up. That makes it a little bit easier if you're going to use a manual lug wrench to get the wheels off, unlike I did making this video using my impact. Once that is done, jack the car up. So loosen the lug nuts, jack the car up and secure it with a jack stand like you see right here. Now you could remove all the lug nuts off of the wheel. You already loosened them on the ground. They're pretty loose to get off or pretty easy to get off. Now you can remove the lug nuts and take the wheel off. With the wheel off, you'll see the caliper. Grab your 10 millimeter wrench and loosen the bolt from the caliper to the bracket. It shouldn't be too tight. This is a really, really loose or not high torque specification bolt that you're going to be installing later. So I think it's like 25 pounds. So it should be pretty loose. If it's hard to get out, you might be looking at a stripped bolt. So you might need a hardware kit. So just keep that in mind while you're going. Once you have the bolts loose, I like to loosen the bottom bolt and pivot the caliper up so it's easier to compress the piston back into the caliper. I just like it this way. It makes it easier for me. So I recommend just take the bottom bolt off and pivot it up. Get your caliper compressor tool or your C clamp to compress the piston. But before you press the piston back into the caliper itself, you need to make sure you loosen the brake fluid reservoir cap. When you push the piston back into the caliper, some people, if you look online, they say you need to bleed the brakes or open up the bleeder to push the piston back in. We do not do that in my process. And if you choose to do that, let me know and let me know why. But in my process, we do not open the brake system at all. When you compress the piston back into the caliper, it's going to push all that fluid up into the brake reservoir. And you just don't want to blow any seals when you do so. All right, now that we have the reservoir cap loose, let's go ahead and grab a old brake pad and your caliper compressor. Use the old brake pad as the press to push the piston into the caliper. Never use a new brake pad in this situation. You don't want to ruin it. You don't want to make some hard spots in the brake pads. I'm not sure if that would happen, but never use a new brake pad to push the piston back into the caliper. Push the piston all the way in or as far as you can. Now, when you have this caliper off, look at everything. Make sure that the boot on the caliper piston isn't ripped or the accordion boots on the sliders are not ripped. If those are ripped, well, especially the piston, make sure to get a new caliper in this situation. And if you do need a new caliper, make sure you check out the video library because on the driver's side of this vehicle, we ended up replacing that caliper because there was a torn boot. And I saw a little bit of moisture on there. So of course, go ahead and replace it. So video library, replace the caliper and bleed the brakes as well. With the piston all the way in and assuring everything looks good and we don't need to go get more parts or tools to get this job done, with the piston completely compressed back into the caliper, remove the upper bolt on the caliper to bracket bolt. Set that off the side so that's your 10 millimeter bolt. Go ahead and remove that. Grab the caliper and you're going to hang it on the shock or the spring up there. You're going to use a bungee cord or I'm going to use an S hook. But here in this video, somehow my GoPro went crazy and stopped filming for me. So you don't get to see the part of me actually hanging it up on the uh, spring up there. I'm going to try to give you some stills of that, but make sure you have the caliper supported. You don't want it to be hanging on the brake line. So support it up there on the spring or the shocks assembly. And now we're going to remove the caliper bracket to knuckle bolt. These are going to be 17 millimeter bolts. You're going to need a half inch socket wrench and a breaker bar, perhaps. These ones are pretty tight when we tighten them up. So these are kind of hard to get off sometimes. 
And when we do the tightening process, we will be going over the tightening specifications or the torque specifications that should be applied to these bolts when we tighten up. So 17 millimeter removes the caliper to knuckle bolts. With both of those loosened, we could remove the caliper bracket itself. Remove that brake pad, that inner brake pad. Make sure you take note of where the wear indicator is when you remove it and always reinstall the new brake pads with or in the same location that you removed them. So make sure when you install these brake pads, you're gonna have the wear indicator on the inboard pad on the bottom side. After we get the brake pad out, you're gonna remove the hardware kit. These are gonna be your slider shims. I don't lube anything up. And before I put new ones on, I make sure everything is cleaned up. So just remove all the hardware, get this thing ready to clean up and get put back on and set it off to the side. Here we are ready to remove the brake rotor. On Hondas or on this Honda, you have these screws. You have two screws that are holding the rotor onto the hub assembly itself. These two screws are what I call production screws. They use this or Honda installs these screws on the production line to hold the rotor from wobbling around when they're installing all the other parts on the vehicle. So these are pretty much called assembly screws. You do not need to use these. A lot of people don't, but I prefer you do. To remove these screws, you're going to need an impact driver. You'll find a link in the description below for that tool as well. Some people say you need a specialty Honda bit that will get these screws off. I've never purchased the specialty bit to remove these screws and I've always used the bit that was provided with the tool set to remove these screws and never had a problem. I like to grab the Phillips bit provided in the impact driver tool set. And I'll put it on the screw on the hub and I'll hit it with the hammer a couple times just to shock the threads a little bit to loosen up any rust or corrosion there, that there might be inside those threads. So knock it with the hammer a little bit. Don't get really excessive and hurt yourself. Hit them with the hammer a time or two and it'll loosen them right up. In this case, you might even just be able to get them off with a screwdriver now, but we are going to use the impact driver. What you're going to do is put the bit into the impact driver. You're going to put the bit obviously onto the screw. Turn the driver in the direction you want the driver to turn, but you want to just turn it to where you get to the point to where if you turn anymore, it's going to start to slide in or the hammer slide will slide in. Don't push in and don't allow your force to push the screwdriver in. You want the hammer to apply the pressure to turn the screwdriver. So the whole time you're just going to push forward or apply forward pressure to the screwdriver, but not enough to turn it, hit it with the hammer and it will turn in the direction that you are holding the driver. It's really easy to use, don't be afraid to use it. And you really do not need to use these screws if, if you do not want to when you're reinstalling everything, but I personally like to. If you don't wanna use these screws or you stripped them out somehow and you don't have them, you could use a lug nut or two to hold the rotor in place while you are reassembling everything. But now that we have these screws out of the rotor, go ahead and remove the rotor off of the hub assembly after you remove the rotor off the hub assembly, take a look at the hub itself. Make sure the hub doesn't need to be replaced. There's nothing really noticeable about it. It doesn't wiggle around. It's just, it looks good. So one, make sure the hub is good. When you get ready to install the new rotor, you wanna make sure that the hub surface, the flat surface where the rotor is gonna meet the actual hub, you want that nice and clean. You don't want any peaks and valleys or rust or dust or anything built up right there. Some people like to use some lubricant such as anti-seize or something when they reinstall the rotor to the hub. I personally do not, but if I came across a manufacturer that recommended it, I would do so at that time. I purchased this really cool kit off of Amazon, I think, but they had them on eBay too as well. I think it was around 50 or 70 bucks for this kit. It came with a bunch of different pads. It came with a few different bits for my drivers. I come to find out that it works best in the drill. It did come with an adapter to use in a impact gun, but it does not work good in that situation. So I would recommend using it on a drill only. This kit and pads will slide over the lug nut stud. So you could clean up where the surface is right around those really easy. And you can see this saved me a ton of time. It took me maybe a minute or two to clean up the hub. We're in the past doing it all manually. It takes maybe 15, 20 minutes to get everything cleaned up and really ready to put the rotor on. So this does save you some time. There will be a link in the description below for this hub cleaning kit. Now that the hub is all cleaned up, let's get the rotor and we're gonna install it right onto that cleaned up hub assembly. If you are going to use the production screws to hold the rotor in place, you need to make sure that the rotor is lined up with the screw holes when installing it onto the hub assembly. Other than that, if you're not gonna use them, just slap it on there, you're good to go. 
If you choose not to use those screws, in this situation right here, I would use a lug nut or two to hold the rotor onto the hub. So when I put the bracket on or the caliper on, it doesn't move around. It makes it a lot easier to assemble everything. That's why I do like using the production screws. With the rotor on the hub, screws tightened up. Let's go ahead and get the caliper bracket cleaned up. Use the wire brush to clean up the bracket, get all the rust and dust off of there so the silencers can sit flush on the bracket. You don't have to go too crazy on cleaning it up. Just get all that rust and dust off. Take a look at the boots, the slider boots and all that. Make sure there's no moisture built up right there or rips or anything that would indicate that you need to replace the accordion boots on the sliders before you put the actual bracket back onto the car. It would be a good time to go get those now if you do need them. The next step will be putting the bracket on and then cleaning off the slider pins. So if you need the boots, you might as well go get them right now. Now that we have the bracket all cleaned up with the wire brush, we're going to get new hardware. These are going to be the silencer shims and we're going to put these onto the bracket. After we get the top and the bottom silencers on, they're locked into place. We're going to put the bracket over the rotor onto the knuckle and tighten up the bolts through the bracket to the knuckle. We do like to tighten everything to proper torque specifications. So when tightening up these bolts on this vehicle, you're going to be tightening this up to 80 foot pounds. So the bolts from bracket to knuckle, 80 foot pounds using a 17 millimeter socket. I prefer a six point socket, and I'm also using a half inch torque wrench to tighten these ones down. The three eighths torque wrench might not go up to 80 pounds. If yours does more power to you, just use one torque wrench to get everything done in this scenario. If you need torque wrenches, make sure you look for a link in the description below to purchase those. I do recommend that you tighten everything down to proper torque specifications. You can see I used my fingers to start the threads into the bracket. Then I used my Milwaukee quarter inch gun to snug them up. And then the half inch torque wrench to get the 17 millimeter bolts to 80 foot pounds. With the caliper bracket installed over the rotor, let's get the brake pad set. Take a look at them. Make sure they look good. Get your springs, get everything set aside so we can get them loaded into the caliper bracket. Make sure to install the inboard brake pad with the wear indicator on the bottom side of the brake pad, such as when we removed everything. Both brake pads should have silencer pads on the back sides of the pads. These will absorb the vibration so you don't get squeaking or any annoying sounds coming from the brakes when you apply them or let off of them. Make sure you get good brake pad sets that include all of these parts with them and not just the pads. Get both of the brake pads installed into the caliper bracket. And don't forget the spring that goes on the top side of the brake pads. This spring is what causes the brake pads to release off of the rotor when you let off the brake pedal. So these springs on the top of the brake pads are pretty important. And now we can move on to cleaning off the slider pins. These pins need to be free of all debris. You don't want any gunk or grime built up on these that are causing these slider pins to not move or to jam in some fashion. I like to take these off, clean them off real good with some brake clean, and we're gonna use some ceramic lube or some ceramic brake lube to lubricate these slider pins when we reinstall them. We wanna make sure that they're free moving in and out. So I'll jam it in and out of the cylinder a couple times or the hole a few times. Don't use too much brake grease. I am pretty liberal with mine and I do get a little bit of complaints about that, but I like to be a little liberal, but not too liberal with my lube. Get these all cleaned up, slider pins top and the bottom. After we get those all cleaned up, we can go ahead and grab the brake caliper. Remember back in the beginning of the video, I said my GoPro froze up on me and I was hanging the caliper up on the spring from an S hook. Well, here it is. This is the S hook holding the caliper up there. We're gonna grab the caliper, slide it over the brake pads. First, make sure those return springs that I mentioned earlier too are properly fastened. Mine actually popped out, so I have to put them back in. You can see right here, the return springs on top, slide the caliper over it. Make sure you don't hit the shims on the back side of the pads. When you put the caliper over the brake pads, if it's hard at all, double check everything. Make, make sure the piston is pushed all the way into the caliper. You're not hitting the sliders, you're not hitting the brake pads. Everything slides into place very easy. Slide the caliper over the brake pads onto the actual bracket. When it gets onto the bracket, we're gonna tighten these bolts up on the slider pins as well to proper torque specifications. The proper torque specifications on these slider pins to caliper bolt is going to be 25 foot pounds. And on this vehicle, these were 10 millimeter bolts. I like to use a six point as well on this 
These 10 millimeter bolts are only 25 foot pounds. You don't want to over tighten these. They'll be real easy to break the fine threads, soft metal, and they're really small screws or bolts. So they'll snap pretty easy. You don't want to over tighten these ones at all. 25 foot pounds, 10 millimeter six point socket. In the description below, you'll find tools and parts for everything to get this job done. So make sure you double check that down there. After we get everything tightened up, we're pretty much ready to put the wheel back onto the vehicle. But from here, what I like to do, get in the vehicle, you're gonna build up pressure in the brake pad system or in the braking system. Press your brake pedal three to five times, get it nice and stiff down there, get a firm pedal. After you get that nice firm pedal, go double check you don't have any leakage or anything like that at the site of the brake job that you're doing. You shouldn't because in the fashion or if you follow the way that I'm doing the brake job, you don't need to bleed your brakes and you don't need to open your bleeder at any point in time. We're just going to push the fluid back into the system. After we've built up the pressure in the system, we don't see any leaks. Now let's go ahead and top off our fluid in the brake fluid reservoir if we need to. If we don't need to, just put that cap on and we're good to go. Put that wheel back on, admire your job, pat yourself on the back, and make sure you like, subscribe, and share all of my videos, please. I appreciate you checking out my video and I hope this video does help you out. If it does, make sure you comment below with the year, make, model of the vehicle that it did help you on. And if I missed something, comment below, let everybody know. Thanks for checking out Scotty's Hobbies. I'll see you guys on the next hopefully helpful video. Maybe one of these videos right here will help you out as well. Click on those, share them, whatever you would like to do. I appreciate you guys.